Good morning. Welcome. We especially welcome Nate McFadden back to the piano bench here with us today. Thank you, Nate, for coming and enhancing our worship today. And I need to ask you in your prayers to particularly remember our brother Tim Gunther. Tim, they did a biopsy Friday on the lung and found that the cancer has returned in a pretty aggressive and dramatic fashion. And Tim has chosen to opt for palliative care. So he's now in palliative care. Keep he and Betty in your prayers, please, if you will. And we'll keep you updated on how, how his condition is going. A couple other things to announce before we get started. It is still time to register for winter convocation this Friday and Saturday at Kalahari in Sandusky, where we'll have a family reunion, if you will. We'll worship and sing together. We'll hear our new bishop preach. We'll have some classes. We'll eat some good food and just have a good time. So if you're at all interested, speak with me about that today. And looking forward, Lent begins end of February. If anybody can remember back, all the way back pre-COVID, we, we were having a very strong Lenten Wednesday evening class. We were actually doing the inquirers class, soup and light, very light soup and salad, and then inquire in class. And we were having a good time. We're going to try it again this year. And this year, there'll be a sign-up sheet going up for those who want to provide soup and salad. But also this year, we're going to do a seven-week study of the Psalms using material from the Kerygma Bible study. There'll be a sheet going up for that too to sign up so, you'll, so we'll know how many copies of the book to order. So be looking for that. Watch for the sign-up sheet to be willing to be a part of that as well. Watch also for the news. We're trying to figure out exactly how we're going to do Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper this year. The, youth, the joint youth group is sponsoring it. At one point we thought it was going to be at Belleville, but it's not. It may well end up back here, but we'll be getting out the news on that. But that will be coming up as well as we prepare for Lent. Anything else I'm forgetting? In your prayers, also remember uh, Shia. Shia today, Shia Puckett has gone to uh, Elyria on her way to Elyria. Remember last year when we had the youth here for the weekend for their happening event? And Shia was one of the youth going through the event that later. She's on the team this year. That'll put it on to the other youth, and she's gone up today. We ask God's blessing on all the youth that are preparing for that weekend to be lead that weekend in two weeks for their for their peers. So please remember them in your prayers as well. Anything else? I'm forgetting. I think that's it for now. Oh, I will announce to you just as good news once again. Need to know that the Diocese of Ohio has approved and has sent us the check for $15,000 for support of the food pantry this year. So once again, so if you forget, if you wonder why we need to support the Bishop's Appeal that comes out, that's why. We're one of the biggest recipients in the Diocese of that money which comes in through the Bishop's Appeal. But when you, if you're going to Kalahari or if you see, have any reason to see any of the Diocese staff or Bishop, tell them thank you as well. And look, when you go out to the fellowship hall, there is a vase there. And look at these, are the, the roses in it. Carol Loveless is making these. These are again made out of the old vestments that are falling apart. And Carol is making them to be used as centerpieces on the tables at the rehearsal dinner for our new bishop. It's a consecration. So take a look at them and let us know what you think. We think, I think they're going to great, work, work great for that purpose. Anything else? Thank you.
Holy Eucharist Rite II is found in your Advocate or beginning on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Plan the thoughts of your hearts by our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear our supp the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the sixth chapter of Micah. Hear what the Lord says, rise, Please your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you, mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will condemn, contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery and I sent, you, sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, and Blaham, son of Bor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim and, and got, uh, to Goggle, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. We will now read Psalm 15 responsively by whole verse. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? 
who may abide upon your holy hill. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not leap content upon his neighbor. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. A reading from Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know. God through wisdom, God decided, through the foolishness of our proclamation to those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what, the weak, what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord.
Christ according to God. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and talk, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are they are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be saved. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people revile and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Man of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain and he began to teach them. Yes, this is part two of last week's sermon, so it seems appropriate that it begins the passage that Jesus saw. Because if you remember last week, it was about what he was seeing. We'll start at the same place, repeating his story. So this far we have to visit a relative in a major city. Walking down a busy and noisy main street amid the clutter, confusion, and clamor, and traffic of the general hall of the city in question. Just said a fire truck goes by, the siren blazing, and the farmer says, Listen, I hear a cricket poking up. His relative, a carefully conditioned city dweller, snickers and replies, How do we hear a cricket in the middle of all this? Or a cricket at the very core of a buzzing city. You can't hear that. The farmer from unfaced says, I think you hear what you're listening At that point, he took some coins out of his pocket and dropped them on the side. And at the almost inacceptable sound of a few coins hit the concrete, children stopped at the tracks, heads turned, and everybody listened. What we're listening for, what we're here, what we're looking for, what we will see, what we hear. And last week I talked about the call of the first four disciples and asked a particular question. What was it they saw or heard that enabled, enabled or compelled them to say yes to Jesus' invitation to follow him and become fishers of people? And by extension, the question was, what are we missing in looking? Are we people who are looking for the light of Jesus in our world, or have we become so enamored or even seduced by the dark that we no longer even see the light? And I invite you to join me in an intentional experience of beginning each day this week by making a prayer of repentance. Asking God to forgive our tendency to look for look to or listen to the darkness, and rather have the courage and faith to repent and walk in a new direction, into the light. Jesus promises is coming to the world. So did anybody do it? I don't think that's so right. But I will admit myself that that's the perfect success. It is hard to really hold my feet to the task when there is so much going on to listen to, so much clamoring for my attention, and so much darkness to see. Where is the light in the news for minutes? Released the video showing the horrific beating of tired enemies. Or in the news of two more mass shootings. Or that brings a total of 41 shootings in January, in which at least four people, not counting two, were killed or wounded, and almost 60 people 
God. Where is the law? Is it the reality of ongoing political and social turmoil, of economic uncertainty and fear? Not just speaking the losses and pain and sorrow for every day of life, every day of personal lives. The pain we feel when we wind up our brother's tendency or our worry of the gay Where is the law? Yet it has to do with what we're looking for. I was speaking with someone earlier this week who was essentially given up, and as far as this person is concerned, putting it freely, the whole world, world is going to hell of a handbasket. Everything good has been destroyed, and there's no good left, no values, no hope. And in all honesty, it's not all that hard to see how one can produce that conclusion. But the reality is, the people of God have faced this victory in every time and place. For those first disciples, Peter's in the grand and James and John, they lived as victims of a cruel and oppressive Roman empire. They had often been sold out by their own Jewish leaders who collaborated with the Roman overlords for their own economic and political benefit. It was a kind of poverty and need, especially in Galilee, which had been ravaged by the Romans for having dared to question Roman authority. It was hard times to say the least, and dark. Where was the light that they somehow saw in Jesus coming from? And how could they dare to believe he could overcome their darkness? And yet there have always been men and women in every age and there still are who are here to see the light. Who have hoped in spite of the pain and darkness, who have proclaimed that the evil and death and oppression and pain are not possible. And they have done it, not as Pollyannas who stick their head in the sand and ignore the darkness. But as those who embrace the world in all its pain and allow God to open their eyes to see it and their life in a new way. So if we take the step of asking God to at least make us willing to repent of our fascination and preoccupation with God and to open our eyes to see a different road, a different path in the world, what will we see? What is that journey going to look like? What is the road that we've been called to look like? Actually, we will see many things, I think. But I want to concentrate on just a couple. And they come out of the scriptures today. What I think Jesus is saying in response to seeing the people. And what the prophet Michael was saying in response to God's call. First, we will have our eyes open to see a world in a way that turns all the sin into logical, common sense standards and values of the world upside down and inside out. Thus, the attitudes. Think about it. Jesus' words do not make a lot of sense. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. The merciful, the pure in heart, the peace of peace. And this is the easier version of the Beatitudes. Luke will write more bluntly, blessed are the poor, the hungry, the persecuted, and the oppressed. Common sense would seem to say, is say that if this is what I need to be or experience to be blessed, then maybe I don't want to be blessed, right? The world says, by contrast, to be blessed. Blessed are those with big bank accounts who have plenty and can protect themselves from the worst experiences of life, who never really have to be hungry, and who know peace because they are part of the world of freedom that is forced. From the beginning, he was burned and stayed with Bethlehem until he died on the cross while proclaiming forgiveness, forgiveness for those who were killing him. Jesus invited us to see the world in a new way. To see beyond the values of the world to a deeper and more real place. He turns the values of the world upside down. 
This is what Paul is speaking about in today's epistle when he says, The wisdom of this world is folly to God, and the wisdom of God is to lose.
like it's saying, Shall I come before God with burnt offerings, with calves and your own? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, for the fruit of my God, for the sin of my soul? No, he says, he has told you the Lord what is true. What does the Lord require? Do justice, love kindness, and walk covenant with your God. What we will see on this new road into the light is the call to do justice, in that we are to never accept the way things are as the only way they can be. The challenge systems that will allow or turn a blind eye to the beatings of the tyrant of this world. This world. To question economic injustice concentrates more and more wealth in the hands of the few at the expense of the many, and often at the expense of the least of us. To call for respect and dignity and live it out of the way we interact personally, politically, and globally, as well as in our neighborhoods. To, like Jesus, never accept less, accept less than love as the standard which we call real love. Or as our presiding bishop Michael Corey has put it, live lives that shout out the truth that if it's not about love, it's not about Jesus. And love will never be wide in the face of any one of God's children of you. This is the road in which we see and embrace and become God's agents of love. The Jesus that the Jesus is bringing into the world. It's a hard road. It is a road to God, to hope, in the presence of God. I love the prayer we all know as the prayer of St. Francis, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. But recently, and some of you may have seen it as well on Facebook, I read an alternative version that I think might be even more important for us to hear if we really want to take this journey down the road, shown on the light of Jesus. It's a version called, Lord, make me a channel of disturbance. Written at the author is unknown. Here it is. Lord, make me a channel of disturbance. Where there is apathy, let me grow up. Where there is compliance, let me bring a question. Where there is silence, may I be the voice. Where there is too little comfort and too much act, too little action, Rankings rush. Where there are doors closed and hearts locked, grant the willingness to listen. When laws dictate and pain is overlooked, when tradition speaks louder than deed, grant that I may seek rather to do justice than to talk. Disturbance, Lord, to be with as well as for the alien. To love the unlovable as well as the love. Lord, make me a channel of the stories. This is the road of life. This is what we are called to look at. This world in which we become among the those who proclaim the upside down. Let us continue to stand in front of our faith in the words of the United States. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the Emperor of the Earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God for God, life for life, true God. Yeah.
prayers of the people found in your advocate on page 9. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, Anne, our bishop coadjutor, elect, Joe, our rector, Daniel, our associate, and David, our rector emeritus. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, and especially Joe, our president, Mike, our governor, Tim, our mayor, and our legislatures and judicial officials. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We especially remember Brenda McGregor, Lavina Messimer, Sally Neal, Carol Palland, Logan Prater, Logan Garber, Tim, and those we now sil name silently or aloud. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. From our memorial prayer list, we remember James C. Gorman, James C. Gorman, Jr., Ruth Gorman, Lulu Grafton, Frederick L. Grimes. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Lord, in prayers for people, what we have asked faithfully grant to be a faint picture to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our Lord. Most verses for God.
So come to communion. Marsha will have the cup for those who choose to receive by intinction, and Tom will have the cup for those who choose to sip from the cup. Let us continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, 
the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the forgiveness in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he gave it thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And if the last day brings with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. the gifts of God for the people of God. Where are you going? 
Ah, okay, they came back here? No. Carol, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Ava, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, Carol, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Peg, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Mighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries. In this one body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.